even Santa Claus has been fully vaccinated. Kids aren't getting the jab in Brazil, not yet, but over 75% of adults are fully vaccinated. In some big cities, the vaccination rate is almost 95%. Many Brazilians are hopeful that things could soon return to normal. Many families are planning big Christmas parties. Even the New Year's Eve party on Copacabana Beach will take place, albeit in a smaller format. But are they celebrating too soon? I'm Daniel Winter and this is your COVID-19 update. Could there be reasons to be optimistic in Brazil? It's been among the worst affected countries in the world, with more than 600,000 people dying from COVID-19 there. But there are signs the pandemic could be loosening its grip. After a slow start, vaccination rates have increased and there are fewer new infections. Vaccine maker Pfizer has launched a study to find out what happens when an entire city gets the jab. Just a few months ago, doing the rounds here was a gruelling task for emergency doctor Jose Aparecido Sobral. Though now all empty, these beds were once occupied by critically ill COVID-19 patients. The corridor of the hospital in the Brazilian city of Toledo is deserted. Emergency beds now in the storage room. It's the result of what might be Brazil's most successful vaccination drive. We used to have 40 intubated patients here, now we don't have any. And it's very rare for us these days to have to provide that level of intensive care. The cases are also much less severe than before, so we can think more carefully about how best to treat those who are sick and to give them a better prognosis. Toledo in southwestern Brazil is home to some 143,000 people. Coronavirus was rife here only a few months ago, like many other parts of the country. The severe health crisis was followed by one of the fastest and most efficient vaccination drives in Brazil. American pharmaceuticals company Pfizer recently launched a long-term study in Toledo. Over the course of a year, it's observing what happens when everyone in a city is vaccinated against COVID-19. Everyone over the age of 12, including 13-year-old Anna, will be given the full dose. Her mother tells us that her whole class got vaccinated with no bad side effects. She adds that almost everyone continued to go to school as far as she knew. Vaccination isn't compulsory. There are just hardly any skeptics here. The city council president is simply relying on people's willingness to get vaccinated. I doubt that anywhere else in the world has so much expertise and so many vaccination centers. If we'd had enough vaccine before, 100% of the population would have been fully vaccinated long ago. We have a tradition of vaccination. Toledo is serving as a test lab for the rest of the world. In a year or two, many questions could be answered here. Under which conditions do virus variants develop among vaccinated people? And how long does protection last? At this Toledo hospital, there's growing hope the pandemic is finally coming to an end. And let's get more on this now with microbiologist and science communicator Natalia pasnak tashner Thank you very much for joining us, Natalia. Do studies like the one in our report give us a reason to be hopeful or is there still a long way to go? Thank you for having me on the show. And yes, there is reason to be hopeful. And these kind of studies will bring us many answers as to how, how the virus spread, how the new variant spread in a vaccinated population. Following up all these people in one or two years' time will give us answers about waning immunity and how long immunity lasts and do we need boosters, how many boosters, for how long. So uh, it, this kind of study is really helpful helpful. And vaccination in Brazil, I think, is a living proof that vaccination works and that there is hope when people really are willing to get vaccinated. Disease drops. So I think there is reason for hope. I'd like to dig a bit deeper on, on that fact, because we are seeing success in some 
cities, over 90% uh, vaccination rate in some cities, among the most successful in Brazil. But how is the country coping with COVID on a, on a broader level? The country is doing well now that we are finally vaccinating. I mean, Brazil has always had a tradition, a very strong tradition of vaccination programs, and people are very used to vaccinating, very, very favorable to vaccines. So we knew that once we had vaccines rolling, people would get their shots and numbers in, of the disease would drop. And this is the result of 50 years of investing in big publicity campaigns about vaccine safety and uh, vaccine awareness in Brazil. So uh, it, it's good to see that it works and numbers are dropping in Brazil, number of cases and hospitalizations. And of course, we must watch out for Omicron now, but things are going smoothly in Brazil right now, thanks to vaccination rates. So the long-term investment in science communication is paying off, is what you're saying. But when it comes to Omicron, as you just mentioned, how is Brazil performing when it comes to the booster jab campaign? Because as we know, booster jabs, the three jabs in total, are the best way at the moment that we can deal with this new variant. So uh, Brazil is perfectly capable of giving booster jabs to the population. As I said, the only uh, bottleneck that we had in Brazil was vaccine availability. Now that we have vaccines, we know how to vaccinate. We can give booster jabs. We just need to keep the campaigns going. There is no way that you can vaccinate 200 million people without good publicity campaigns. So as long as we keep it rolling, uh, we will get everyone vaccinated soon enough. And what do we know so far about the vaccines that we currently have in the face of new variants such as Omicron? Yeah, so it's bad news about Omicron because uh, the preliminary tests show that it, uh, most vaccines lose effectiveness with Omicron. It was expected. It's a variant that carries a lot of mutations right in the spike protein. So this was expected, but it doesn't mean that we are completely unprotected. It just means that we lose a little bit of effectiveness and we will probably need a booster jab. So it's going to be probably a three-dose vaccine for everybody, especially with new variants arising, but it doesn't mean that we are all unprotected. So I think the message is very clear. We have to get everyone vaccinated. We have to get everyone a booster jab. And what does it really mean for the poor countries that are struggling to get their first and second doses? Well, I think that uh, your message to vaccine skeptics is clear. But when it comes to, as we've heard, celebrating Carnival, celebrating New Year's Eve, what do you see? Will you be celebrating or are you going to be having a social distance New Year's Eve? What's, what's the advice there? The advice is family celebrations only. We are all, we are in a much better position than we were last year for the New Year's and family and holidays. So let's celebrate that. That this year we can get reunited with our family. Everyone is vaccinated. Our grandparents are vaccinated with yeah. third doses. So let's get together in small family gatherings. It's not the time yet for big celebrations, big parties, even if they are outdoors, even in Brazil where it's summer right now. Okay, but yes. huge people gatherings are not something that we want to look into right now. A clear message there from Natalia Pasternak Tashner. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. And now it's your turn to ask the questions. Answering them, our science correspondent, Derek Williams. Can vaccines end the pandemic? You know, it's interesting to look back on nearly two years of reporting on this pandemic and, and realize how much our ways of thinking about some things have changed over that period of time. Um, remember, for instance, when we all more or less thought that if we could just manage to vaccinate 60 to 70% of the world, then we'd hit herd immunity and, and SARS-CoV-2 would be conquered and would just sort of magically go away. Well, along with vaccine hesitancy in many places, the arrival of new 
more highly transmissible variants and waning vaccine-induced immunity have kind of put paid to that idea. Experts don't talk about herd immunity much anymore. And I think that's because it's always been pretty closely associated with the thought that we'd be able to eradicate COVID-19. And, and most scientists no longer believe that we'll be able to do that. In fact, uh, most think now that the declaration that the pandemic is finally over, when it comes, that it'll be um, less of a bang and kind of much more of a, a whimper. For most experts, the goal has stopped being to wipe out the disease entirely, but instead to manage it as we do others. And that's where vaccines will play a really major role. Um, though the evidence indicates that vaccines don't do as much as we'd like to hinder the transmission of SARS-CoV-2 or to stop infection with the virus entirely, they do generally prevent the development of severe symptoms that can lead to hospitalization and death. So in that sense, vaccines can end the pandemic, um, not by helping us to wipe out SARS-CoV-2 completely, like the smallpox vaccine wiped out that pathogen, but instead by protecting enough people well enough that one day we'll be able to live with COVID-19 like we already live with the flu. And that's it from the COVID-19 special from the whole team. Stay healthy, stay safe, and see you again soon.